uh, but it's very, very cool device. I think it would be real handy, and in some cases, you wouldn't even have to have solar. You could just completely not even take solar with you, charge your house battery while you're traveling, and then when you get where you're going, your battery is topped off and ready to go. Redodio sent me a 40 amp DC to DC dual input battery charger to test out, so let's open it up and see what it comes with. Looks like we have a product manual some 50 amp Anderson connectors, six mounting screws, and then the charger itself. And it's already equipped with Anderson connectors. You've got one for the solar input, one for DC input, and then this goes out to the service battery or the battery you're trying to charge. Some mounting brackets on both sides for the six screws. Looks like it's a aluminum case with a built-in uh, heat sink. Here on the side of the charger, they have a handy sticker showing you some of the specs. The DC input would be your alternator, 11.3 to 24 volts, and then the solar would be 13 to 26 volts. And then it shows you the charge voltages for the different battery chemistries. But that's handy to have that right on the side of the unit. Pretty good sized cables. Let's see what it says here. 200 degrees Celsius silicone jacketed wires. Really nice quality cables. And then you've got a single wire here. This is for your accessory plug if you have a smart alternator on your vehicle. A couple of buttons here and a couple of rows of lights for battery type and then charge status. So there's no cables included other than the spare ends to make your own cables. So I'm going to rig up a setup here to where we can fire this thing up and test it out. So for those of you who may not be familiar with what this actual charger is or does, in my mind, it's a 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller with an additional feature to where you can connect it to your car's electrical system through your starter battery. And while your engine is running, you can charge your house battery as well. So you can either use solar to charge or you can use the starter battery to charge your house battery. Basically, that's what it is. It can take up to 26 volts of solar input and 600 watts. I'm going to be simulating basically a solar panel array using my benchtop power supply and that'll be my solar input. And then I'm going to use these two batteries. The large battery is 280 amp hour. That's going to be our house battery simulation. And then the small battery is going to be my starter battery simulating that we're connected to the starter battery. And if you look in the manual, it does a really good job of explaining how to set this all up. You'll have to use the included 50 amp Anderson connectors and your own wiring to make up cables in this fashion. And I've built a couple of cables, just two, two and a half foot long cables for both. So solar has a 60 and the alternator or the starter battery has a 60 amp and then your house battery has a 50 amp fuse breaker. For the simulation, I don't have any breakers installed, but if you're gonna mount this permanently, certainly you would want to install the breakers as they indicate in the manual. The yellow wire is the output that goes to the house battery. The red is the input coming from the starter battery, and the blue is the solar. This accessory is only gonna be necessary if you have a smart alternator on your vehicle. So I'm going to plug in the house battery, which will be this yellow wire, and that's my larger 280 amp hour battery. So once you connect your battery, it powers up the device, and then you can adjust this battery type, and it gives you four to select from here, and those are a little bit difficult to read. One over here is lithium on the right hand side, and that's what I'm using is lithium ion battery, so I want to uh, adjust that. So hit the select button, hold it down for a couple seconds it'll beep and the light will blink and then you can press it to get to the proper battery selection that you're going to set up. So once we get it over to the battery we want, which in this case will be lithium, just hold that select button down for a few seconds. It'll beep and stop blinking and now you've got the proper battery selected. Okay, so we have the house battery connected. Let's connect the starter battery. That's going to power up and start to charge. So I've got a couple of apps for these 
two batteries that I'm using for this demonstration and I'll screenshot that and put that up on the screen now for you. Now this is the starter battery, the small one that I'm using, the 100 amp hour I'm using for the starter battery. And you can see on the app, 565 watts coming out of this battery and a current of minus 43 and a half amps. That's coming out of the starter battery. On the unit here, we've got a red light on the left is power on. The next one is flashing and that says it's charging. The next one would illuminate if it was fully charged. And then over here on the right shows when there's solar charging going on. So currently, right now, we're charging via the alternator, or in this case, simulated alternator. This is the 280 amp hour house battery. And you can see amperage 39.7, so almost just under 40 amps going into the battery and 530 watts. That is the benefit of this device. You don't even need solar. You can get 500 watts while you're in route, while you're driving to your location and be charging your house battery just with this device using the vehicle's electrical system. Pretty cool. With the engine running, you'd be able to do this amount of power output through this device indefinitely, basically. Let me turn on my benchtop power supply so we can simulate that we also have solar on the roof. And I've got it set up with 25 volts and I think I have it set for 10 amps. So that would simulate like a 24 volt solar system on the roof of your vehicle going into this charger. We'll unplug this to simulate that we just turned the engine off. Then the solar will take over. This will flip over to solar charging and we'll see what we're getting out of that 25 volt 10 amp solar panel setup. So we're at the campsite. And we just shut the engine off. You can see the uh, house battery was zero for a second. And now we're starting to get power from the solar. We're indicating solar charge here. Almost 10 amps going out of the uh, solar panel. And 24, 25 volts going into the DC-DC charger. If you look on the app there in the center, we're getting 18 amps of current and 233 watts. We've got that going in for the solar. Once we start the vehicle, the alternator charge will take over. So we'll plug in the thing simulating we just started the vehicle. Now we've switched on the indicator there to charging from the starter battery. And you can see it's ramping up now. It's kind of got a slow start, which is nice. Or a soft start, I guess, would be called. And now we're up to 40 amps of current coming out of this starter battery, 565 watts. And going into our house battery, we're back up to about 40 amps of charge and 536 watts of power through that alternator and the starter battery. So very, very cool device. When you park and shut the vehicle off, the starter battery will still be supplying power to charge the house battery, unless you had a switch on that. So you could run your vehicle down to where your starter battery would be at a low voltage, but you can do reverse charge. So you can hold this button down for a few seconds. And what it'll do is take power from your house battery and put it back into your starter battery so that your starter battery will be able to start the vehicle again and you're not going to be stranded. Very cool device. I think it's uh, very well built. It's very simple to connect and use. You just have to remember you're going to have to come up with your own wiring. That's probably the most difficult part of the whole thing. But they do give you the Anderson connectors. You'll just have to have a crimper and the wire in order to set that up and some fuses. I think it would be real handy and in some cases you wouldn't even have to have solar. Not even take solar with you, charge your house battery while you're traveling, and then when you get where you're going, your battery is topped off and ready to go. And if you had a couple of cloudy days and you're using solar, this would sure come in handy to get you out of a tight spot. Because if you have solar only and you got cloudy days, you might be out of luck as far as charging is concerned. You could start your vehicle, charge up your battery, or go for a drive and get your house battery topped up again so you're not going to be without power. Very, very cool. I'll put links to all this in the description of the video for those of you who want to get more information. And if you want to see another one of my solar related type videos, click the video on the screen now and I'll meet you over there.